Uh, happy Australia Day. <clears throat> I won't take long. I'll read this. My fellow and Sheila Australians, this won't take long. My mob, the Cullen clan, have lived in Australia since 1822. My great-great-grandfather, Cornelius Connor Cullen, was imported here from Ireland. His grandson, my grandfather, Edwin Narromine Ned Cullen, a drover, married to my grandmother, Enid Nolan, Australia's first woman blacksmith, was no doubt familiar with Australia's very first original homegrown folk song. When I first came to this land, I was not a wealthy man, so I got myself a shack, and I did what I could. And I called my shack, break my back, for the land was sweet and good, and I did what I could. They had eight children of their own, plus a couple of strays that wandered in, and lived in narrow mine in a wattle and daub house with an earth floor, demolished only a few years ago to make way for progress. You can't beat progress. When the combined harvester was invented in 1884, narrow Ned was on hand to sail with it to America and demonstrate that revolutionary Australian-made miracle machine for export. Two of his sons, my uncles Jack and Phil, were in the light horse. And when World War II started, they were exported. Grandfather understood the importance of the words export and homegrown. And he would sing, When I first came to this land, I was not a wealthy man. So I got myself a cow, and I did what I could. And I called my cow, no milk now. Called my shack, break my back. For the land was sweet and good, and I did what I could. Australia has come a long way since the 1800s when rabbits, sheep and cattle, cats, rabbits and convicts were our big imports. You can now see fields of imported motor vehicles, huge foreign-owned stores filled with furniture, white goods, computers and machinery from all over the world and watch blockbuster films and TV shows made anywhere but here. We are part of a big uh, picture now, the consumer part. But we tried and we sang. When I first came to this land, I was not a wealthy man. So I got myself a duck and I did what I could. And I called my duck out of luck. <laughs> called my cow, no milk now. Called my shack, break my back. For the land was sweet and good, and I did what I could. Looking around today, you could be forgiven for thinking Australia is nothing more than depleted rainforest, polluted waterways, flattened kangaroos, and assorted roadkill to remind us of our proud heritage and what progress we've made. But that is not true. Australia's progress is not just drilling holes to export gas and fossil fuel with no respect for farmers and our precious dwindling water reserves. Australia is, for me, Australia is the place my great-great-grandfather came to as a boat person in chains from Ireland in 1822 because he borrowed a crust of bread to feed his starving family. His wife Mary and their seven children joined Cornelius in 1826 in Campbelltown and promptly died. <laughs> and their son Thomas, my great-grandfather, he sang, When I first came to this land, I was not a wealthy man, so I got myself a wife, and I did what I could. And I called my wife, run for your life, called my duck out of luck, called my cow, no milk now, called my shack, break my back, 
for the land was sweet and good, and I did what I could. Today, Australia isn't just one tall playwright, an overweight poet, champion sportspersons, drunks, a horse, an outlaw with a bucket on his head, and a few actors, singers, writers, and the odd painter and scientist who have made it overseas. No, Australia is the land of neglected Aboriginals, unlovable politicians, obnoxious radio commentators, and a whinging actor. <laughs> An actor, I might say, who has the right to criticise, but should, at least, have the decency to suggest how he would make things better if he could. Well, I'll tell you. As your ambassador for the day, I will tell you what I would do to make Australia better. I'd leave. <laughs> I would go back to Ireland and I'd tell the English to leave. Now I'd build a house of stones with no windows and dream about Australia. I'd dream about the hills of home, blue in the distance, fresh water creeks and running rivers filled with seafood, birds that laugh and dine on snake, a marsupial that can box and bound, birds too big to fly, some that talk, one that's called a lyre that can mimic any song or sound, brilliantly coloured birds, snakes and lizards, koalas that get stoned on a gum leaf and a possum that can fly, magnificent flora, more wild flowers in one place than the rest of the world put together. I know why painters love Australia. No other place has its light. Red earth, blue mountains, far horizons, her rugged mountain ranges, jeweled sea, her beauty and her danger, the wild brown, etc. No other place on earth has painters like Australia's original inhabitants, the traditional owners, painters of dreams. There is as much to love about Australia, my country, our country, as there is to look upon in despair. When I was a little kid, mm, there was a sign in Hilda Gardens that fascinated me. Let no man say, and say it to your shame, that all was beauty here before you came. And I said to my mother, I said, but it's true. It was beautiful before we came, wasn't it, Mum? And my mother said, you just wait, my son. When you grow up, you will understand. Well, my fellow and Sheila Australians, I'm still waiting. <laughs> and my father sang, when I first came to this land, I was not a wealthy man. So I got myself a son, and I did what I could. And I called my son, now my work's done. So now it's my turn. So I got myself a song, and I did what I could, and I called my song, this won't take long. <laughs> For the land was sweet and good, and I did what I could. Happy Australia Day, everybody. Thank you all for being. Thanks very much, Max. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll note that in my introduction to Max, I didn't say that he was a great singer. I think you understand why. He's a very good singer. But in truth, we've had many, many ambassadors to, uh, to Yas for our Australia Day celebrations in the past, and I don't think we've ever had one just like that. Please, once again, thank you.